and shift. Powered by Uno Media. I got, I got, I got, I got. World champ, world champ, world champ, world champ. Our guest this morning is a mother who will just happen to kick your little booty. 16 <laughs> fights, 16 wins. A product of Tamaki Makoto's West Auckland. She is a four division New Zealand champion holding more New Zealand titles than any other female boxer and the current IBO world super bantam weight champion. Our guest today, fams. The yes. night, Mia Motsu. Welcome, sis. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for being here today. We're in the, the presence of greatness. This what a paragraph, cool. Brooke. I love that. You're I nailing these intros, you. my boy. You are nailing these oh, intros. Oh, we've got world champion Seriously. here today, man. Come on now. It's the IBO world super for me, you know? Mm, it feels good. Great to have you in here today. Let's, uh, you got an amazing story that I, I can't wait to kind of dive into. I know a lot of the times when you we used to catch up, it was at our old place, but it was kind of like those quick chats. Yeah. We didn't have time today. I'm so excited to hear we your backstory, yeah. where you are today and kind of unfold that. And what the future holds for you, because whole, <laughs> holy heck, it is going to be eight. yeah, very, very <laughs> special. Mean. Very, very special today. Yeah, definitely. Um, I Obviously, I know you a l little bit more than the other boys, because when I was training for Fight for Life before, I didn't get an opponent. But, uh, you know, those weeks watching you train just had a different level of admiration for what you guys do. Like... I know I'm like low level, but like they were like <laughs> a lot higher. And I was just like, how? So again, we're just, uh, thank you for coming on the show. Before Brooke gets us started, just it's such a privilege to have you here to share your story and just for us to get excited about all the things you're still going to achieve. Thank Fair. you. So we always start the show with something called Meet Me at the Five. So it's like five quick questions. Okay. Kind of first thing that comes to your head. Okay. Oh, yeah. First one is what's your favorite movie of all time? Oh, I remember to walk. Remember to walk. What's that? Um, Mandy Moore and um, oh no, give us the whole like we got time. Tell I us. I remember about the, the no, plot it's not, and everything. It's, not, wait, wait, it's, it's um, a walk to a remember. A walk to remember. <laughs> sorry, oh. <laughs> see, I'm terrible with movie names. That's right. Yeah, but really hey, that is a reminder wrong. for all of us to walk who uh, need to get a bit more active in our lives. Facts, yeah. facts. And, uh, what's your favorite moment of that? Uh, phew, the whole thing actually, but when she sings, it's a great. Thing. Okay, yeah. shout uh, out Mandy Moore. If you could fight anybody for a world title, dead or alive, who yep. would you fight? Oh, who would I fight? Who would you? Oh, like Jerome Pampalone. <laughs> <laughs> Peach boxing. Yeah. If you guys do get to do get to spy every now and then, though, you can take you that know? call. Nah, nah. Is it's <laughs> not important. So I don't know who it is. Is there any tea there? Is Jerome just someone you want to have a boxing fight with? Nah, it's just I love his craft mm. and his art of boxing and the way he holds himself. Yeah, he's yeah, for he's, me. he's amazing. He's like literally the best, like. Jerome, for me, he's my idol. He's my role mm. model. And he's the person that I look up to and like, I want to be, I want to fight like him. Mm. He's so calm and relaxed and he's just got wicked speed and power. It's just unbelievable. And I see his grind. He's constantly just grinding every day. Love so that's a, that, that's new for me. It's a new concept. Like, so you want to give him a hiding? <laughs> <laughs> yep, I want to yeah, give him because if I can yeah. beat him, then I'm yeah. like, yeah, Work I'll it. beat Canelo. Work it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you obviously not on a strict diet most of the time, but when you get a chance, like, what's your first thing, your favorite thing to eat after a fight? Burger King. Yeah, it's Burger King. Like, that's the first thing that comes on my mind. Rodeo. No, the Rebel Whopper. Oh, uh, yeah, Rebel Whopper. Yeah, because I don't eat meat. True. Yeah. But that is a good, um, I don't really like veggie patties, but that's a good patty. It like is. the rebel. Oh, okay. It tastes like the real thing. Okay, yeah. True. Like that. But I you like don't that. feel so heavy. Are you, you feel like nothing light. Are you super strict anyway during, or do you have a treat like on the weekends or usually? Or? Oh, no, I'm terrible with chocolate. <laughs> oh, you kill chocolate? Yeah. What's your go to chocolate? chocolate? Snickers. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. Okay, what about the start car bench? Okay. Floyd Mayweather, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson. Floyd Mayweather. Start, start, start. And who, yes, that's a real box. Who would you put on the bench, real and who would you cut? I'd cut Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Rumble, <laughs> young man. I'm telling you, this is real. Like Mike Tyson's like. got the power. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. You know, they might sting like a butterfly. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about all that. Mm. It's boring. <laughs> don't worry about it. All right, fifth and final one. She cut <laughs> And they didn't even care. <laughs> nah, I didn't. What, 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 what don't people appreciate about, about Floyd? Because you started him. Sorry, just quickly. Sorry, Brooke. His defense, his IQ. Like, he's got the best defense and IQ 
it's amazing. It's unbelievable. It's hard to touch him. Like, have you ever seen him being hurt? Yeah. Ah. In his fights? 50 fights and 50 wins. Yeah. That's crazy. And he's a legend, but people just, it's just because he was smart about it, you know? Mm. <laughs> he's the highest paid fighter, and the way he did it, right from the start to the end, was amazing. Look, he's still getting paid high. True. And he's not even fighting. I saw he was in South Africa the other day, and he spent seven million at a Gucci store. Mm. Cash. Banged it out. Yeah, they see? walked out. Seven million. That's crazy. All right, final thing. Greatest accomplishment of all time. Are you, are you talking about in yeah, life? Anything, yeah, anything goes. My children. Beautiful. The greatest gift I could ever, and that's the best accomplishment, was having all five of my kids. The best moment you can never take away from me. Yeah, Which is, yeah. like, I agree with you. The fact that you have five kids and still <laughs> have the time and the patience and just the attitude to go out there and be what you are today and about to be even bigger blows my mind it's just a credit to who you are and what you do and your craft it's 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 amazing so yeah you should be very proud of yourself oh well, that's me me at the five <laughs> that is me me five those are on the beat hey, like, hey, Ali, okay i think maybe that's um, <coughs> maria yes maria that's where we can start people call you mia but that's because they mess up your real name maria right yeah because so i hate it when they call my name wrong yeah you're it's just like, like oh. fine just call me mia yeah yeah like majority of people can't say it properly they always call me mariah or maria like with the i and it's like no, <laughs> I'm with the E. But run exactly. us through that frustration because it's literally just your name. Like that is your name, and you it's my to, identity. It's your identity, oh. and you my had to mom, change it up. My family named me. I was born. I came into this world with my name. Mm. So that's if you can't say my name correctly, then don't say. It, just call it short. That's just what I've learned yeah. because I I would prefer. It's like my nephew. It took me like a whole year to try say his name correctly. I wouldn't say it until I practice it and practice it. And then I could now I can say his name, which is Tuharota, mm. which took me a year to learn. It's a hell of I'm just looking at you. Well, like I love I'm that. Like and we'll we'll be saying Maria all of this podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think w w was <laughs> the first question I kind of want to ask is, at what age and when did you just start thinking I want to start getting into boxing and become a world champion? Because <sighs> we all know champions usually grow up through grades, right? Yeah, like a, lo a lot of the time. Like when when was it for you? Uh, it was high school when I started, and I hated it. Oh, like I hated it, but then I loved it. I liked the fitness of it. Like, did you get? Did someone just sign you up to boxing gym? Like, how did it happen? My mum signed me up, and I was like, oh, okay, yes, yeah, sweet. I'll do. I'll, Cause I was playing soccer at the time, and I Football. was like, that's where the footwork comes in. Yeah, and I was like, oh yeah, I'll be mean at this. And then like I tried to like get into like the Auckland team and stuff, but I had to be like way fitter because I wasn't fit enough. Yeah. And so I went to boxing because my mum, her nickname, she was doing boxing at the same time, and her nickname was Mad Dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We still yeah. Mad Dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was because, like, one thing, my mum, she was crazy. Like, she used to play league, and she was like a crazy league player, and she would never let me play it. And I was like, why can't I play league? And she's like, no, it's not for you. And then I was and like, she was like, Box boxing's the one. <laughs> yeah, no, but she put me in boxing and thinking that I'll just do it for fitness. And then I was like, nah, okay, you're not taking this away from me. Because <laughs> she didn't like the shoulder charges in league because mm. she would always be scared, like, oh, nah. But boxing. So I, I don't want to be those guys, but Maria, you, you, you look like someone who maybe had a few scraps at school. Like, were you getting into fights or? No. Oh, like, really? people would my fight bad. me, but I'd never lift my hands to them. Mm. Because cause me, I like, when I was doing boxing, I kind of was like, in sphere of like if i lifted my hands mm. which is our hands like my hands like physically if i had lifted my hands to somebody i could hurt them yeah. badly and then i won't be able to live with myself mm. so i knew i was strong but i don't know how strong they were because they like even though i thought they could fight but then it's not a, it's not worth it trying to take someone's life away at the same time because i've seen it i've seen like so many people just die from the wrong punch by their bare hands or mm. knuckles. Mm. And so like, I didn't want to do that to a girl. So I'd be like, oh, I'm fine. Like she can't, the well, majority of girls that had fights, I would like laugh. Cause I'll be like, is that all they got? <laughs> Cause it's all, girls fight so with like, they're like the hair, hair. Hey. And it's, it's the like, hair for me. It's the hair and the scratching. <laughs> it's not fighting. Can we talk about the hair? Because you've, uh, you've identified and had the red hair for a long time now, but why red? Why did you choose that? Cause I stand out and it's my color. Yeah. 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 Not because I want to be a gangster, no way. <laughs> <laughs> nah. well, red is because it's my colour. Like, I've, I've always thought that I suited red. You do? Yeah. Because I tried blue. 
because all my cousins are like blue, 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 <laughs> and I'm like, it, I it doesn't look good on me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Now, so what what did like life like high school you get into boxing? What did life look like for young Maria then? Like what was your what were you going through? It was actually awesome. Out like with family, like I loved pig hunting, diving, going to the beaches and having family feasts. Like honestly, mm. my aunties are like chefs. <laughs> Their food is like top of the line. I'm like, still to this day, I'm like, oh, there's not a restaurant that can still be my auntie's f- cooking. Because yeah. I don't know, it's just made with love and mm. it's just comfort. It's healing almost, yeah. That's That's really yeah. What did you want to be when you were growing up? Did you always, obviously it wasn't like boxer was the first thing. When you were growing up, you, you want to be, a, everyone says like, I want to be a doctor or I want to be a pilot. What did you want to be when you were growing up? I wanted to be a firefighter. <laughs> hey, you really, you really like yeah. red, eh? <laughs> yeah. I really wanted to be a firefighter. I was like, when I was young, I was like, I want to be a firefighter. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I want to help the community and stuff. Because I thought that was cool. Because I think firefighters work hard and like, it's 100%. scary at the same time. Facts. Facts, they do. Uh, I want to like stay like at a younger age yep. as well. Um, you, you have like five kids and you have to like train the whole way through that. What did you do during that period? Like, started early and then obviously you've had kids the whole way through how do you train and have kids i've, I've watched and lucky enough to have my son now he's two yeah but i'm like it's, it's oh we hard. time poor we only got one That's we, hard. We can, yeah we got one son each and we're like <laughs> I've got no time. I've got no time. i think you just learn and you find ways like honestly i just i just kind of fluke it really like <laughs> the biggest thing is i got family support but oh, right. like my family all work so i have to try juggle it between my family and then myself and I have to make it work because I got five kids. I'm like, you just you find ways. Honestly, it's amazing how you literally think you only got one, and that's hard. But it's not till you like have more, then you realize like, you just kind of just lock it in, and it just falls in, like on oh, no, okay. It just happens. It just happens. You make it work, and you just go with the flow, really. And do they love watching your journey as a mum being a boxing champion? Yeah, my oldest do. Mm. Like my they my two biggest, now. they totally understand, and they're just they don't want me to stop. They're like, just keep going, mum. And now my son, oh, do you know what? My son gave me the biggest fright yesterday. He was what? like, Mum, um, how would you feel if I moved to Australia? I said, nope, it's not <laughs> happening. It's not happening. And then he was like, because he was like, oh, it's for work. And I was like, ah, oh, definitely no. No, no, no. No way you're not allowed to leave. And then he was like, no, but Mum, it's for bowls. And I was like, oh, okay, nah, I changed my mind. Can you, you can talk go. about that yeah. quickly? So who is your son? He's my son is David Motu, and he's a professional lawn bowler. And he's only 16. I remember you, you spoke a to us last time. He gets paid uh, to her. Yeah, he gets paid too. Is it like that's like there's a whole other like like there's a, this is like an underworld that we don't really know of or see, but it's like popping like bowls. Yeah, bowls is big. Like I thought boxing was big, but he's way bigger than me. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. How did he fall into bowls? Because obviously when we think about it historically, like, oh my nan plays bowls. How did yeah. he like get a champ? Into- yeah, he's he's like New Zealand champs. Like, yeah, that he plays for New Zealand. And he's like the youngest in his team. Wow. He plays for the under 26. Wow. Yeah. And he's 16. And he's 16. The records yeah, this kid is going to break. I know. And he just, he's so passionate about it that he wants to go to Australia and to get even more skills and just get better because he his goal was to go to Olympics. So I'm not going to stop him. I like told him because when I was young, I kind of was like, I was determined, but then I didn't have that support mm-hmm. of like my family. They supported me, but they didn't quite understand how deep you got to go to be a professional player or a professional athlete Mm -hmm. (coughs) so my son like when he said to me he was dead serious about bowls I was like okay I'll do everything possible to make sure that you pursue your career I'll support you 100% and so will the family and so now he when he told me that yesterday I was like yep okay no I'm not letting you have to do it do it take it you'll never because like he's got an opportunity they just offered it to him over in Australia so I'm like, good on him. If How you cool. go tomorrow, you go tomorrow. How cool is it that um, <coughs> he's trying to be a champion and his mum's trying to is a champion and is still trying to be, you know, more no, get more championship status? Does do you like push each other? No, we don't actually. <laughs> you just allow each other to be fun. No? Yeah, we yeah. just yeah. like so. What my s- the good thing is, I separate is boxing stays in boxing, and then my son's the same. Bowl stays in bowls. Well like talk about our achievements, but we separate it yeah. because what, you know, when it's home time, it's spend time, quality time because we barely see each other. So I try and make it just about family. It's a beautiful motivation to have too. 
Great yeah. question. Yeah, um, Maria, sorry to, to interrupt. I just wanted to know, you know, you're talking about the levels it takes to be a professional athlete and you know, you understand it, your boy understands it, you know, and there's this mutual understanding. What What is it for us who don't know it? What is that mm. extra level that's needed? Just need, you need like, you know, when you get opportunities offered to you, don't turn it away because a lot of us, like even when I had an opportunity when I was a teenager, I was like, oh, nah. I'll, I've got this, I'll, I'll do this and I'll rather stay here where I'm comfortable. But a lot of us don't want to go, we're too scared and we're too fearful to go out of that comfort zone. And so we stay where, we're, where it suits us. That makes a lot of sense. And then we're unable to, how are we meant to grow when we stay comfortable? Yeah. And then you're never going to learn as you grow. Mm. What so you're always going to stay you're only going to stay on that level. What fuels that in you, though? Like, do you know where that comes from? Because I know my comfort zone, and I love it, and I don't want to be moved out of it. But I kind of am with this podcast, <laughs> yeah. and where we're at in, in our broadcasting careers, to a certain extent, we've had to move out of our comfort zone, and this is all new for us, and it's scary, and it's different. But what fuels you? I know I've got a family I've got to feed. That's that's partly for me, but what's been fueling you? It's the unknown. Mm. It's amazing yeah. how the unknown actually can turn into greatness. That's wow. the amazing thing. Where did, um, Maria, where did you experience that? Like, when did you push into the unknown and you had that that moment of like, is this what I read about? Is this what I see? Is this what it feels like? What well, is my first fight, my first professional fight. When I, I was so, like, I was actually scared, but I was confident, but I was actually scared because I was always like, oh, no. I always wanted to play safe. And I always wanted to be in my comfort zone. So I was like... How does that play out in a boxing fight? Because I know what you... I, I, I've done a tiny bit of sparring, but you you feel it. You you, you don't attack it. You is that How does it look like? You hesitate. You? Mm. So in life, we, we're always constantly hesitating and we never want to embrace our full potential. It's amazing. Like literally no one understands how potential they are. It's that we doubt ourselves and we kind of just sit in the safe zone. And it's not till you get out of that comfort zone and then you actually realise your true ability. Because so many of us, like I, I literally believe in everybody has a special talent. It doesn't have to be sport, but it could be like even through school, you know, work ethic. It's just, it's in anything. But they just, they stay safe. And because we, we just stick at our comfort zone and what we, we know, and it's not till you realise the unknown you're actually, you're destined for greatness. And that's why all the top world champions in any sport, it's because they've taken themselves out of that box and they've believed in and backed them and be like, nah, okay, I'm just gonna, tr I'm just gonna trust what I know and give it a go. Because what happens? The biggest thing that can happen, yeah, you wanna fall, but you can always get back up. Mm. Everyone's scared to fall mm. because they're scared of getting back up again. It's not till you fall, you're learnt, and then you go again, and then you're going to constantly keep growing, and it turn, you just become a champion. Went from failure, huh? Yeah. yeah. Is it is it worse in New Zealand? Because obviously you've travelled a lot, and I, yes. I think we we all talk about Topoki syndrome. Is that is yeah. it worse here? We're so scared to take that yes, risk. New Zealand definitely. What do you think it is? Because you know what I've I've thought about this too, Maria. Like it's centric to New Zealand in a lot of ways. You, you go over, you've gone to, you've, you've gone overseas, you see how Americans be, like they just have, they walk with this air of confidence. confidence. I don't know yes. where they get it from, but it, it's, it's awesome too. Like I, I appreciate it, but you can't, what do you think it is about here, about our people, wh where we grow up, how we are, hide, hide, um, I can do this amazing thing, but oh, I, don't, I don't know. It comes down to attitude. Mm. That's what it is. And everyone just, because attitude is the biggest thing in sports. Like, for me, like, attitude is big in boxing as well. Like, one thing Isaac's always said, if you ain't got the right attitude, you're not going to last in the sport. Because, mm -hmm. like, he always constantly drills with us, like, do you believe in yourself? And we're like, yeah. And he's like, no, 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 I can feel the doubt. And then I'm like, really? Oh, he beats doubt out of you. He beats the doubt out of us. On mitts like, while they hit Yeah, <laughs> because he's just like... That he always says, you've got power, you got, you know, you can beat these people. He believes in us no matter what. And so it's that extra belief that he gives us and then it gives us that determination like, oh, stuff the whole world. Mm. We're, we've got the, we we've got the tools here. What do you, when you say attitude for you, what, do you, what are you literally thinking? What is your self-talk at training or in fights or 
What's an example of that? No one can beat me. Mm. Don't That's be scared. Fact. Don't be scared. Because you know what? A lot of Kiwis are scared. They are scared. They act <laughs> tough. Scared, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They true. act tough. Like, honestly, true. everyone, like, you know, when someone says something out there, like, oh, yeah, I'm tough. But then when it comes to, like, sports, school, work, they're weak. I don't understand oh. it. So that's where, like, you know, they change their attitude. So when it comes to work and then it comes to sport, they're like, oh, no. Or believing in themselves or yeah. showing up for themselves. But if, if someone steps in out, they're like, okay, come yeah. on. Yeah. And that's when the attitude. Why can't they keep that in the work, in the sport? Because in the succeed. everyday environment. Yeah, in the environment. Well, it's hard for you to get fights, right? Because people don't want to fight you. Yeah. So you have the, there's a reason that you're a four division champion because you have to fluctuate your weight so much to go and find a fight. Yeah. How, how does that? I'm loving this, by the way, Maria. Yeah. I'm yeah. loving this. I'm feeling. I'm, I'm Cause you're up for anything. Fight Brooke after the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk about it. Talk but is about that, that's probably is it, is it more frustration? Is it once you've done it? Obviously, it's a great accolade. But is is there so much frustration that builds? Because I know you just want to be in the ring and and, and prove yourself and and go from strength to the strength. But it's hard when you can't find a fight. Yeah. Um. It is frustrating sometimes, but then also I can I can understand why girls don't want to fight because they want to play safe. Yeah. Where I want to play dangerous, and I'll take that risk. I'd know. rather be known as taking that risk and giving a hundred and twenty percent and not having fear and showing other people that fear it's okay to be in fear, and it's okay to give things a go in fear. Because mm. everyone's so scared that they allow that fear to be like, oh, no, I'm going to get knocked out. Oh, no, I'm going to lose. Everyone's so scared of losing. Well, I don't why, know actually, why. Why aren't you scared? I'm scared of yeah. losing. Why well, aren't you do scared? Do you fear anything? Is there something that you do fear? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm yeah, in the a only <laughs> thing yeah. I fear is death and time. Because, you know, time is precious. People don't realise I've lost, I don't have any of my grandparents. And I miss them. And I treasure them, but like people don't realize how precious time is. It seems long, but it's very short. Enjoy, enjoy the moments and live life to the fullest. Don't go back like there's so like so many times in my life I've like I've looked back and been like, oh, I, re I regret. I wish I did it earlier. But now I'm like, nah. Why am I regretting when I can do it right now? Because I'm still living. Um, you know, we all put a limit to ourselves because we we limit ourselves by age. And then by health, and then because like I've got the worst health ever. Like I'm constantly always got asthma and everything, but I don't let that defeat me. It's almost like, That's and so this awesome. is this is from this an chat. outsider looking in. It's almost like you have learned to harness fear in a way that it fuels you. Like it is like yeah. it's not the reason not to do it; it's the reason to do it. Yeah, is that and correct? Yeah, and I I truly believe then the only person you should feel uh, like fear in general, and it says it in the Bible. Is our heavenly Father? You shall fear nobody, and that's 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 what I carry with me all the time. That's I, amazing. Uh, yeah, I, and I think for people who are listening to this, and um, what what I think is beautiful about it, Maria, is it sounds you're making it sound so simple, but it's the simplicity that's hard. Yeah, and I, you know, these boys, I can't say it enough. I have watched you train, and I've watched you show up, and I've watched you walk into training and I'm just like I did I did a you know five six weeks yeah. you know that's all I did and and I was wrecked but you I, I watch you you have this unrelenting no quit attitude and I just I just have to affirm you on the words that you're saying and that you're actually about it like guys if you're listening to the shifters this is a world champion this is someone who like we haven't even talked about like weight classes yet mm -hmm. and how a lot of boxers won't fight outside a certain amount of weight yeah. your last fight did you fight Nanson last time? Oh, oh yes, yeah. Before? Oh, that was last year. Can you can you talk about like the the weights and how you really shouldn't have been in that in that fight technically, right? Yeah. In terms of weights, like, can you can you speak to that? Like, explain it in layman's terms for those of us who don't understand. So normally I fight at fifty five three, which is quite very small. Which what's the what's that weight category? That's super bantam. Super bantam, yes. So I moved up three weight divisions, and that would have been sixty kilos. To fight baby Nansen. Which is huge in, in fighting, right? That's huge. Like, you're giving so much weight because, like, also she's cutting down and then I'm trying to put on weight, which was such a struggle to put on the weight. Yeah. So let's say you go into the fight at 54-ish. Yeah. What what will she fight at? at what would she what would she have fought at on that fight night? She could have got up to... She could have got up to easy 63 to 66. Wow. Easy. Or even 69. And you're taking that fight like, yeah. Yeah. I want to fight. 
and you won. <laughs> yeah, because I just, you know, I truly believe in just don't fear nobody. Because, you know, if you're a true believer, you know, if you're a really true believer and you stick to your faith, and I truly believe in my faith, I'm very strong in my faith, and I've always read the Bible since growing up. My mum's instilled that w- with us, so it's constantly always replaying in my mind. And it always says, you know, you shall n- you shall not fear anybody but our Heavenly Father. Is that where it comes to too? Because there's a very fine line between arrogance and confidence. Yeah. And I don't think you even towed the line at all. I can't hear you being arrogant in any way, yeah. shape or form. Confidence is definitely there. Yes. But is that where that, that confidence comes from? Yes, it does, definitely. And the work you put in? Is yes. That- it all comes down from me being a believer. What is the work you put in? Like, give us a, a day-to-day <laughs> of what you are doing, because I feel like we're just about to have our minds blown. Because you're in camp now, right? Yes, I'm in camp now. <laughs> Can you quickly talk us through a Monday to Sunday fight week camp? Like, what you actually have to oh, do? Oh, man. I don't think there's no days off. Um, <laughs> I'm training every morning, and then... What will that consist of? Pads, like what? Pads, running. Heavy bag. Heavy bag, sprints. Oh, the whole work. Like, but it's very old school. We don't use any fancy machines yeah, or anything. Love, they hate we machines, bro. Yeah. They Boy, hate machines. Yeah. Back Isaac to the grind. doesn't believe in, like, he's so against science. <laughs> what about that bush run at the back of the woman? Oh, that's nasty. Run us through this. So oh we got this bush run, gosh, and it's got, like, it's got like it must have, like, 50 <laughs> easy steps. <laughs> and it's going They're up like the hill. long steps, though? Yeah. <laughs> and we have to, like, run down to the bottom and sprint all the way to the top and you can't be the last because if you're last <laughs> you're gonna make us do more <laughs> you get so, punished so you're doing that so that's that's your first training and yeah. then like is that one one of those that's one yep. and then in the afternoon it's all like sparring mm. and then it, and then fitness also like i hate i hate tuesday or wednesday because what's on tuesday or wednesday? <laughs> he either he changes it some days because he tricks us he'll be like nah no fitness today uh we're not going to do it today. And so we'll be like, damn it, I'm mentally prepared for that. <laughs> and then it comes on Wednesday and he's like, you got fitness? And we're like, uh. oh, okay. Because we were like, oh, yeah, we got sparring. Like, yay. But fitness is like, oh, man, it's a bit of everything. So it's run on a three-minute rounds. But you're either on the bag with Boaz, which <laughs> yeah, Boaz, I hate. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boaz got like that kind of like, when I, when I hit pads, like, they, they, some, some trainers go, like, they're nice, yep, go again. Like, Bo's just, like, mute. Yeah, he's not mute. <laughs> like, no vibes. And almost not. doesn't press into your bo- uh, into your glove at all. And so it's so <laughs> frustrating because you're like, he just drains you because he's, he's just like, one, two. Harder. Uh, yeah. Harder. Harder. Oh, and I was man. like, oh, I'm trying to go harder. <laughs> but, like, he shows, like, no emotions, no nothing. So, like... I can't, it's hard to read. I feel like you love the darkness. Yeah, yeah, I do, because I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it makes me challenge, and he just still, like, I've been with Boaz for two years, and I still can't, he's still the same. He's like, one, two, one, two, hop. <laughs> Not good enough. Pasta. Hara. Fundamentals. And it, there's no expression. There's just like, hara. <laughs> Straight face. Is that your, obviously you have this big build up, and then run us to when you actually get in the ring because I feel like as an athlete, once you get into, <laughs> her, yeah, you can feel it. Like, is that your happy place? Is that your escape? The world stops, everything slows down. This is where I'm me. Yeah, it's like silence. No one exists. It's do just me and my opponent and the coaches. Do you love it, Maria? Do you yeah. love it? I love it. Do you like, sometimes <laughs> knock them out and go, oh, frick. Yeah, I do that. I actually do. I'm like, damn it, I didn't get want to go. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm saying that like I'm I like you should see this one fight. I'm like I run to the corner and then I'm like, you better get up. <laughs> <laughs> you better like, get up. Nah, nah, I nah. did not want this to finish this early. Because you're I just was, enjoying it. Yeah, I'm just enjoying it and I'm expecting it to go for the full rounds. And I know that's not about you wanting to actually hurt them. No. Well, you have to, but like is that's it just because you wh- why do you love it? That, because it, of all the hard work I put yeah. in and then only for it to finish in one minute, it's like <sighs> Has there been a camp that's been different to others, like harder than others that, you know, that you've, that's affected you? know what? You? Funny you ask that. Every camp is different. Really? Like, it's never the same. Is that good for someone like you with your personality, where you yeah. do like it, so you do, you enjoy the changes? I do. Like, because uh, I, if I'm not going, and I like swearing and be like, damn it, this is crap, this is not good enough, then I'm never going never gonna to know my ability. Mm. And I'm always wanting to challenge my ability because I want to be in that uncomfortable zone because that's how you know your full potential. Yeah. 
What about the, so you said that there are camps that have, you know, differed from others. What are some of the typical things that can change a camp? Like what's some things that can like make it harder for you or where your, where your thought patterns are at? What, what is it for you? Uh, it will definitely, you know, the worst camp would have to be when I have to spar Isaac. Oh, real? He's like mentally a head case. <laughs> <laughs> like what does he do? He just gets in our freaking head. Just like knows what to do? Yeah, he like. You know what? Like he doesn't do need to like he doesn't even need to train and he makes it look easy. He's laughing at us. He's like, I'm like sparring him. He's like, come on, is that all you got? Ding, <laughs> ding. And I'm like, how does he last four whole ten rounds with me in the ring for three minutes? And I'm like, I'm getting angry because he just mentally probably gets jandals in my head. too. Yeah, no, in bare feet. <laughs> He's in bare feet, mm. and it's like. But because he frustrates you, you get into the ring and you're calm because. You're, you're yeah, he's already yeah. mentally got into our heads. I, I think we've been lucky enough to interview a lot of people and a lot of the time when we ask artists, and it's a very confronting question, and I, I'm not going to ask you today, but I think you would nail this question. When you ask, who are you? I think artists do a really good job because they write their problems. In their songs, they write what's happened mm. to them, who they are. When you talk to athletes, a lot of the time we run from our problems, and when we go to our happy places in between the court, we never write anything down. So yeah. we get to this place to run from our problems to silence anything out. But I feel very different about you. I feel like you know exactly who you are, where you are at every time. Like you're very here right now, present. You know what you're doing. You know everyone in your life who yeah. needs to be there, who's the right people in your life, who you are, loyal to a, to a T. I feel like you would nail that question of who are you. Is that right? Like you feel like you know exactly who I, you are? I know who I am, but then also I don't know who I am. You know why? Because... I'm still destined for more greatness. Oh, wow. That's why. I'm not limiting myself. And that's what we do. That's what we, do. we limit and we just stop there. No, don't stop there. Keep growing because, you know, what? it's not until you keep growing. You learn every time. You're always learning something new. I'm always learning every week something new about myself. And I'm like, wow, I didn't know I could do it like that. Oh, wow. We, we all know wow. that, Maria, like you, you experienced the high highs, but – there are the low lows too, yeah. you know, and I and I have, I've heard, I've seen a couple of clips from other podcasts you've done where you've actually been super vulnerable and transparent about your your other journeys that you've experienced, partic uh, particularly with domestic violence. Yeah, and I know um, I spoke with one of your coaches, and she actually mentioned, you know, it's awesome you're doing the potty with Maria, but can we remember that that's a part of her journey, but it's it's not what she's looking to be remembered for. She's yeah. a champion. Yes. You know, and so, you know, if you don't mind us asking, what is that part of your story and what you're comfortable to share? And So that part of my story is I went through domestic violence, which I'm not ashamed now. If you asked me last year to speak about it, I would be ashamed. But now all I see is that I need to be the voice for those other, not just females, but for males as well. Because mm. we mm. all go through domestic violence. Mm. I've seen women hurt men and men have never lifted their hands. So it happens in all of us. Mm. It's not just females, it's in males as well. So I've gone through that and I went through that for like eight to ten years because I thought that's all I that's all I, I knew. knew. It, was normal. That it was normal to me. I didn't know I was so ashamed of speaking about it. And when I did speak to somebody, they kind of shut me out and was like, Well, you're the idiot for staying. And I'm like, Well, give me the tools of how to get out because I don't know how to get out. Because when I did try to escape, I couldn't get out because they would always find me. It's much easier said than done. Yeah, it's much easier said than done. So I went through everything. I went through court, I went through police, and they still couldn't help me. And they just, I kind of just ended up being, I was just like a statistic, like I'm a number. So it took me 10 years to get out of that violent abuse. And I hid it because I was so ashamed but now I'm proud to speak about it because I want to change that narrative and normalize it. Because by changing the narrative, you've got I've got to speak it and voice it and normalize it. Because you speak about it now and people are just like, "Well, you're the idiot," you know. That's the yeah. all the common and it's like have some understanding. Like just have some understanding. Like it was actually hard. Some of sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's so damn hard that you can't get out because you run away and they come and find you. You you know, they put, like, the police put you in a safe place. They still find you. Like, they're relentless. They just keep 
fighting and fighting because they believe that you're, you know, you're the property Position. of them. Yeah. So you, you can't escape. You try escape. I even moved to Australia, still couldn't escape, and that didn't work. So yeah, I went through that for so many years. I was on the run. I literally, I've been all the way from the top of the North Island all the way to the bottom and still found me. And then I moved to Australia, still found me, still didn't work. So I was like, what am I doing running? Why am I running? Why don't I just face it on and do it myself? And that's what mm. I did. I took it on myself because I hated the system, because the system, mm. they failed me. They turned it like he was that, you know, People don't realise how clever gang members are. They act so dumb, but they're super bloody clever. They know the system in and out. So they know how the courts works, and then they know how the police work. The police can only go so far with their evidence, but at the end of the day, it's the judge that has the full say. So if the evidence isn't there, then... So that's what happened to me. Like, I got... Uh, the evidence got flipped on me, and he blamed me, like, you know, because I'm a, I'm, I'm a boxer... This is how clever he said, because I put up for domestic violence to the police. And then he went to the um, courts and his lawyer and said, that's from boxing. Mm. So there's no, yeah, can you see? And so that's what I got. Oh. Yeah, yeah. so that's how clever so they are. This, this whole time, you're training still, yep. trying to be a champion, trying to be a mum. Yeah. And... And you're going and you're going through that. Going through that mm. on my own too. Well, what was the moment you knew? I've I've got to know. I, I've defeated this. Like, you know, this is not going to be a part of my story anymore. Oh, it would have been definitely. Oh, I have to say, last year mm. when oh no, after the podcast, I did the podcast after my fight. You know what? Because I've never spoken about it. Because I've never. I've always dealt with my. I've always had this tough persona, and I've never allowed people in. And I've only just allowed my gym mates and my coach and to my whole. Oh, and knowing them, not knowing, yeah, they were being devastated. He was like, ah! yeah. but he was like, Isaac promised me that he, I would never have to go through that again, and that he would always have my back. Him and Alina will always be there for me from day one. So like, oh, excuse me, emotion. <laughs> yeah, so it meant the world to me because, like, you know, literally after my fight, my ex partner who I left last year as well, because this is this, my children's second dad. He kind of, we split last year and we've been, a, a, like, we commun co-parent. But then I think because of all, like, the fame I got in my fight, he kind of got jealous and he saw us at the mall and then he just started, like, screaming and abusing at me. And then I was just, and I had my, my three girls. So I, like, try to just keep it calm because I don't want my children to be upset. So I kept it calm and my daughter ran away. I rang Isaac straight away because, you know, the security, I asked the security in New Lynn, I was like, can you please help me? Mm. Like, call the cops. They did nothing. They just stood there. And I was really amazed at all the amount of people that stood there mm. and watched a man abuse me and my kids. Mm. And it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't just like... like uh, you said people are scared, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, he was just... But there's like, he's the son... Like, there was heaps of people. But one person who's screaming down the whole mall and, f and, and allowing the children mm. to be, like, hear this, they just stood there and looked. And, like, some were, like, pulling their phones out. And I was like, why don't Help you me. just call? Mm. Like, I'm telling people, call, please. And I'm telling him in a very calm way, saying, please walk away. Please leave me alone. Please do not abuse us here. Oh, Isaac. Yeah. So I had to wait till he's moved so he doesn't snatch my phone. I call Isaac. He gets down there straight away oh. and literally That's saves coach. us. Do you feel That's stronger coach. now more than ever before? Obviously, oh, yeah. we know what you can do, like physically, but I also feel like there's a, a small barrier there mentally yeah. of things you're going through on your own, this journey that you're trying to work out on your own. And obviously, because you're a boxer and you're a world champion, it kind of feels like, I would imagine, I'm strong. I can do this. Yeah. I don't need to tell anyone. But then you finally tell someone or you start to let mm. people know about the yeah. story and then this whole new side of you comes out. And I guess going back to that to finding out who you are. Yeah. And then like, it's like, cause like, you know, when that happened, I call Isaac and they lit he literally picks me and the kids up and I literally go by him and Alina and they just make sure that I'm safe. I'm okay. And I was fine. I was, I was just frustrated. Like, oh, why, why is this all over again? Mm. But then I was like, that's okay. You know, let's carry on. 
I'm, I'm not, I could be in a worse position. I could be in a way worse position. But no, I'm in a great position and I'm not going to let that person take control of my life. Goosebumps this whole day. <sighs> just gets me emotional because you're so awesome, Maria. <laughs> you know, you're so awesome. And it's actually relatively close, your breakthrough, to um, how comfortable you are sharing your truth. Yeah. And it's what makes it courageous is that... Uh, You haven't like allowed you yourself space. You're just like, I want people to feel this if they're going through it. So yeah. I'm gonna share my story, you know. And I don't know, like this chat is it's not all packaged perfectly. Sorry for getting emotional. Uh, it's okay, but it's mean. Like this is what the chats should feel like. You yeah, know? And, th and just thank you for sharing your story. And we're not done yet, but like just yeah, yeah just it's it's so you are just so amazing. And I think I. I as you're talking, I'm getting flashbacks of you in the gym just being awesome, <laughs> you know, and then just saying you want to be awesome. Yeah. So, ah, oh man, I'm just weird. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that and just. I always it. say, for every struggle, there's a light, mm. and hold on to it and keep fighting. There's going to be a lot of people that hear this today and just go, "Damn, I can do it." Yeah. I can do it. Holy. Well, we're not ending there. Can yeah. we talk about this fight? Let's promo yeah. the fight and you being <laughs> awesome. So you're already a champion. So who are you fighting next? Who are they? And how can we all, because all the shifters hearing this, they're going to get behind you. Don't worry. So how do we get behind it? So I'm fighting Alan, who's from Malawi in South Africa. And you can catch it on Sky Sports or come to our event on North Shore Event Centre on 26th of August. And it's not just me that's fighting for a world title. We've also got Lani Daniels, wow. another multi female who's awesome won a man. world title as well. And then we've got Jerome Pampalone, who I truly believe is going to be the next world champion. Mm. And then we've got our boy Zane, who's our up and coming, who's just, he's another one that's going to be a world okay. champion. Yes. He's, he's from South Africa too. Yeah. But he's only little. He's like, he's taller than me. He's like 5'7, I think. And he's um, 50 kilos. Oh. But oh. man, he don't punch like he's fifty. Mm. He punches like he's like sixty kilos. I'm like, whoa. Even I like I'm scared of his power. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what's your um what's your favorite punch? Like if you could knock anyone out with your favorite, I don't know, one, two, boom. Left hook. <laughs> left from the gods. Yeah, left hook and then a right hand body shot. I love it. Uh, come back to your opponent. Uh she's obviously do you think she'll give you a good go? Be honest. Like, are you worried about it? Like, no, 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 sorry, not worried about it. Are you like well, I got I respect her. Or you like, I'm going to roll through this girl. I respect her. Aye. Yeah. I respect any girl that gets <laughs> in the ring. Mm. You know, that's because I work really hard. So I'm no, I, I don't, I have no question, no doubt that every female that fights me works really hard because they know what they're going to get themselves into because they've seen me fight. They know my strengths. So they know that it's going to be a tough fight. So they train even harder. So I give them the respect of, the sacrifice they have to do. Because I'm not only sacrificing, they have to sacrifice too. We all got to sacrifice at the end of the day. So I respect them for what they do. And they're constantly grinding as well. But like, I get, I'm one of those people who, I'm <laughs> so, I'm one of those people that I don't like to see people leave the sport. So like, even though I've defeated them, I always go pay my respects because I know how hard they worked. Mm. They might have not have worked as hard as me because my work ethic is just a whole nother level. But it's I still, still respect hard. how hard they work, you know, because they also got to make a living, still got to put a roof over their head and still got to train. And they put their body through, like boxing, man, you put your body for brutal pain. It's 100%. the training that's harder than the actual fight. Yeah, like, you know, the fight you have like big black eyes, but that, that goes away. It's like the training, man. That's what's frustrating me about some, this podcast a little bit, like, because I, I know like <laughs> how how like hard I tried, and I'm still, like they, these guys are like way like skyscrapers above me. I'm like, how? Yeah, it's so hard. It's so hard. Like our body goes, you know, we we constantly get trying to get massages every week, but it's never good enough. <laughs> That's how hard it is. Like we actually get full on. Deep Sports tissue. Yeah. This is the worst too, huh? Elbows in there. Yeah, elbows. And I'm always like, harder, harder. Are you so old school you don't ice bath or anything? No, I don't ice bath. 
No way. World champion, not even ice bathing. That's how that's how tough nah. she is. Mm. <laughs> Can I just say, Millie, it's been an amazing uh, listen, and I know we've only we've we've tried to pack as much as your life in and your your attitudes and your motivations and all it. that into this podcast. But I have been like trying to relate to you on some. I guess, level uh, in my own life and my own journey. And the only thing I could come up with, and thank you for all your time and energy, uh, is we're pretty similar in the sense that I don't throw fists too because I'm really scared that I might hurt someone. Yeah. <laughs> oh my Shut up, bro. At, at least with boxing, is safe <laughs> control. <laughs> it's all under control. It's a, exactly. Can you please yeah. punch him? Like, <laughs> on the way out, just a rib tickler. Our hands are for loving. That's right. Yeah. I've always believed that too. No, it has mm. been an amazing journey having you, and thank you. Thank you. Can I at least say you do win this fight because we're all thinking that you're going to win this fight obviously we're not getting too far ahead but what's next collect all the belts rack them up oh, i'm not stopping till i get them oh if i fall i fall i'll get back up and keep going shifters Club that, we that's have doing a, the distance right there we have yeah. our people's champion you better you better understand and recognize who Maria, the nightmare motu is uh i think we can all agree we're going to follow your journey sis and just thank you again such a privilege to thank you so much hear your story and you ch and you chat with us any last words just believe in yourself believe and don't let anyone tell you you can't because there's so many negative people but surround yourself with positive positive circle you don't need a you don't need a village to be great you only need a handful of people and you keep that and you hold on to them don't let them go and go all the way keep climbing ah mm. oh, you're the best, the best. there's bulls. this